Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to do a last in a series on my work developing a current limited induction heater. I collaborated with Jonathan Creighton on this project as well and with Archangel Tesla course. So without these guys, this project wouldn't be what it is. So without further ado, let's begin. Hey guys, um, I've been meaning to get uh, back to you with a separate video on this um, feedback induction feeder that I've been working on for the last couple of years. And I've finalized it with a current limiting circuit which prevents the whole thing from blowing up if there's too much current ringing up in this, this part of this coil here, which is called the tank circuit. And it's impossible to go any further without giving a shout out to Jonathan Creighton. We collaborated together on developing this current limiting circuit that you see here. And I'll put up a link to that in the description. So I have some really beefy capacitors here. There's two of these, each rated for 650 amps connected together in parallel and rated for more than 500 volts AC. Now, this thing has to be phased right so that the feedback results in an oscillation in the tank circuit. And I've got some big transistors here. These are called RGBTs and they can handle about 100 amps a piece. I'm gonna show you the amount of current in this coil by levitating a piece of aluminum with the current use the, these chopsticks, which are made of wood, so they should be insulating, to suspend this piece of aluminum in the coil and then to levitate it. So here goes. So as you can see, that piece of aluminum is floating in that coil. Now I'm gonna get a thermal meter going to make sure that none of the components on the induction heater are overheating which would result in failure of the system. So eventually that aluminum will get hot enough to be able to glow. And you're gonna see that happen shortly. This phenomena of metal floating in this coil is caused by eddy currents. The coil has an oscillating magnetic field which induces current to flow in the metal. The flowing current in the metal causes its own magnetic field which opposes that of the coil and results in the metal floating. You'll notice that the upper turn of the coil is wound in the opposite direction to stabilize the metal and prevent it from falling out of the coil. Now you can see it's getting so hot that it's glowing and eventually it won't be able to conduct the current quite as well and it will eventually lose its ability to levitate and it's looking like it's about to fall shortly. Here it goes, I think it's gonna drop out, there it goes. Here's a slow motion. See how it just splatters to the ground? Now in this video, I have the coil set up. I've actually put it all on a board so everything's together. So the uh, tank circuit and the um, full bridge inverter engine and the driver circuitry is all on one piece of wood. And here we're using it to melt a uh, copper scrap. So I have a graphite crucible here to melt the scrap in. And let me just show you the current draw. It's drawing um, about 10 amps. And uh, we'll see how that current holds up. And we're using the current limiting circuit here. So it should shut off if there's a current, an overcurrent event. Here I have this big piece of copper pipe that I want to basically melt, so I'm going to stick it in the melt. There it goes. Started boiling, <laughs> shooting out of there. Look at that. It's getting really intensely hot. I've got to add more to it to cool it off. Here it goes. This will cool it down. All 
my current draw is now about 12 amps. Okay, to shut it off, I'm gonna turn the overcurrent protection limit down. There you go. Now the current shut off, and I'll also shut it off at the power end. The plumbing was connected to a water hose for water cooling of the heating coil. So here's what the copper looks like after it's been melted. And I've got about a pound and a half here and another pound and a half here of just scrap copper that I've melted into these uh, big chunks here. And to pull it out of the graphite crucible, I just put a pipe in it as it was starting to solidify. And then it kind of set in place and then I was able to pull it out of the crucible a lot easier. And here's the coil I used, complete with the compression fittings. Um, so it's easier to swap out these coils. I've got compression fittings there. So this uh, levitation coil can be swapped out using the same types of compression fittings. It's already reached the curing point. One of the things that's great about this is it can be used for forging. So basically you could take large pieces of ferrous metal such as this and then use it for forging. Okay, over here I have a molten aluminum. Same crucible, same coil, except that it's aluminum. And aluminum melts a whole lot easier than copper. Now, just a few words on the coil itself. Um, everything has to be water cooled, and that's what all this hosing is for. So basically, the um, resonant capacitors are water cooled through these water blocks. The coil is cooled as water is passed through it. This, this is 3 8 inch copper tubing, and it's hollow, so you can pass water through it, and it's connected by these compression fittings. And then the transistors also have water passing below them. And uh, these, are, these are water blocks that cool down the transistors. So everything that's gonna get hot has to be cooled off. So I'm not gonna get into too many details about how this circuit works, but in collaboration with Jonathan Creighton, we developed this uh, current limiting feedback circuit. And so tank voltage is here. If the tank voltage is too high, it switches off the feedback is the basis of how this works. And it does this with a series of transistors and a timer, which is this um, 555 uh, monostable timer, which you can set for different amounts of time. This, this one is about 10 seconds or so, and it will just switch off the current, uh, switch off the feedback rather, which turns off the current in the event of a um, overcurrent situation on your tank circuit. And over here is the feedback, which is basically a shunt. It's a wire shunt, which is coupled to this 100 turn ferrite transformer. And then I have actually added here a little uh, indicator light to show that there's an overcurrent situation in progress. And you can see that little indicator light here. And this is actually what the circuit looks like when it's on perf board. You can set your um, cutoff for how much current you want, your maximum amount of current here. And you can set your startup frequency because different sized coils, like, uh, like the bigger coil, will have a lower frequency. This one resonates around 80 kilohertz. And the bigger coil that I showed you earlier resonates about 50 kilohertz. So you want to start your, you want to set your startup frequency above the resonant frequency of your tank. So if you say the um, coil resonates at 50 kilohertz, you want to set that at 60 kilohertz. And just a little note about the feedback transformer. So here's the feedback transformer, which is a small ferrite uh, with 100 turns of 30 gauge magnet wire around on it, wound around it. And it's got a burden resistor. This one's a 56 ohm, five uh, watt burden resistor. And um, you can add multiple of these depending on how much power you plan to run through this. And uh, the shunt is basically 
two copper tabs with some screw holes here and I've screwed down a piece of um, 16 gauge copper wire which is the current shunt and the feedback goes to that circuit I showed you earlier which drives the resonance. Yeah, so that's your shunt. And then this thing here is called a coupling transformer and this electrically isolates your tank circuit from the IGPG switches, which are these big transistors here. So there's no electrical connection. It's only magnetically connected to the tank circuit. Um, and uh, this contain, contains Litz wire. This is like 50 strand Litz wire that I made myself. And I've got about 18 turns of it wound around three stacked ferrite toroids. And you can use like F30 ferrite, pretty much most ferrites will work with this, but you have to experiment. And you wanna also vary the number of turns on here to get what's called a good impedance match between the coupling transformer and the resonant uh, tank circuit. And before I end, one final thing. This is the hose I, I used. Uh, it's called pocket hose, but you can use different types of lightweight um, hoses like this. This thing kind of uh, is like an accordion and it becomes much shorter and smaller once it's uh, once the water's drained out of it. And that's what I use to pass uh, water through the system. And um, I've got silicon tubing, which I just connect onto the end of this hose. And let me show you the end of the hose. I used one of those things to make the little water balloons. Um, you know, there's little uh, kid um, uh, water balloon kits come with these to blow up the balloons. I just took one of those and put it on the end. And then this one fits perfectly with that, um, with the silicon tubing. Well, that went a little over, but I hope you uh, were able to take something out of it. And uh, please check the link in the description. Hope to see you back soon.